Now space contains everything. The mountains, the oceans, the stars, everything. The mind in us, the true mind, is like that. We can identify galaxies light years away, but we still haven't unlocked the mystery of the three pounds of matter that sits between our ears. This is an organ of surreal complexity, and we are just beginning to understand how to even study it. I think we're about to be in a very different world. Neuroscientists have speculated that maybe your memories, the information that makes you you, are stored in the connections between your brain's neurons. We are witnessing an amazing time in human history. We are actually witnessing the co-creation and co-evolution of our new digital brain. There, there's this enormous mystery uh, waiting to be unlocked. For the last 10 years, I've been messing around with electronics. I was asked to be a part of a government grant to create a low-cost, open-source EEG system. I found a how-to-hack toy EEGs tutorial, and it was, you know, $50 for the parts, and I was able to do it in a day. I think everybody is interested in the brain these days, and so now, Technologies are emerging that are allowing us to tap in and listen and try to figure out what's going on in there. We can measure the teeny tiny signals through your scalp and find out what's going on in regions of your, of your brain. It's for scientists, hackers, students. It's kind of for everybody. You take electrodes, you attach them to your body, and you plug them into the board, uh, and then you just push go. You'll see waves that represent your fluctuations in electrical activity. What we and scientists are trying to do are uh, trying to classify and derive meaning from these frequencies and attach them to things that we experience or that we perceive or that we do in our everyday life. More and more people will be wearing systems like this, um, either to track or enhance their lives somehow. I think brain-computer interfaces are going to be instrumental in human evolution. If you get into a car accident, it's a circumstance that's out of your control, and you wish you could just rewind to, to last week. Conceivably, you could image your brain every two weeks, and then you would never lose more than two weeks of your experience. When I met Russell out one night when we were hanging out, he basically posed the question to me of, you know, how would I image the brain? I gave him my opinion on the way to do it, and uh, apparently he instantly shopped it around to various professors at Harvard and MIT. The brain consists of 86 billion neurons, and there are a bunch of connections between those neurons. They're connected via synapses, and dendrites, and axons, and so the connectome is that network of connections. We use contrast agents to distinguish the features we're interested in from the features we're not interested in. Right now, we think synapses seem to record uh, a lot of what's going on when someone learns something. You can think of a synapse as, as sort of a way to store that connective information of things. Once we start to have those synaptic images and start to see if we can create a connectome from them, it will be really interesting to see if we can actually see what a new memory looks like. A lot of what we're doing will have immediate impacts on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and ALS, uh, because we'll be able to build contrast agents that will inform uh, drug manufacturers how well their drug is working. It's a whole new way of approaching neuroscience and, and science as well. 
there's always been a, a kind of tension between the sciences and ethics. You can go all the way back to Prometheus and the myth of the invention of fire. A lot of the Greek myths, Roman myths, biblical myths in the Western Christian tradition, they're cautionary notes about humility, arrogance, don't go too far with your knowledge. But in modern times, through the 50s and 60s and into the 70s, people began to wonder, can we control this new power, whether it's medical or physics? When you get today to starting to think about the brain, everybody gets the heebie-jeebies about, are we still gonna be me, you, us, if we modify that particular organ? The past several years, I think there's been a renaissance of thinking about human capability and how technology can enhance it. I mean, already we have this whole, the whole wearable movement, but I think bigger than that is this tension between do we want to create humanoid elements? Do we want to enhance a human being? Or do we just want the technology to enhance our standard of living? Our thinking then will be a hybrid of biological and non-biological thinking. Just because they want to hack into your brain, that doesn't mean you have to be concerned. You better be concerned. Machine intelligence is the last invention that humanity will ever need to make. The machines will then be better at inventing than we are. Once there is superintelligence, the fate of humanity may depend on what the superintelligence does. When they go in there and tinker, what they're eventually going to do is just very crude control and mostly destruction. It's the seat of our humanity, and that's what they're tampering with. You know, ever since we started raising cattle and growing our own crops, you could say that we started falling out of the you know, natural way or natural order of things. And so we wouldn't have the ability to do what, we, what we're currently doing if it wasn't intended in the first place. It is natural in its own right that we are able to you know, build and augment ourselves, uh, whether it be through neural devices or through computers and smartphones. Human nature's changed, and one of the big drivers of it is culture. Having libraries, having the ability to store information, tell our stories electronically. It seems to me the brain alterations are closer to changing who we are, so we have to be very careful about what we want to be. We develop technology to improve the human experience. I think that whatever we turn into, or whatever we become, we need to make sure that we're still human. What is it about human brain that could potentially never be replicated artificially? A recent idea that I've had is that to be human is to incorporate a bit of the erratic, of the unpredictable. And that's what I hope continues. <laughs>